Welcome to this new course, Patient Interactions and History Taking. This module will help you to gain knowledge which will improve your interactions and communication skills with your patients. At the end of this module, you will be able to describe the role of the radiologic technologist in taking patient clinical histories, explain why patient interaction is important to patients as well as their family and friends, and explain appropriate interaction techniques for various types of patients. In part two of this module, we will cover the following topics. General interactions with patients, imaging patients by age, emancipated minors, disease of the elderly, types of elder abuse, interacting with the terminal patients, and finally, advanced directive. Maslow stated that each level of needs must be satisfied before an individual can proceed to the next level. It is important that the technologist understands that the patient is often at the lowest level of need when they are admitted to the hospital. They are often apprehensive and afraid of losing control. Patients may often experience anxiety, extreme emotions, and may react inappropriately. The lowest level of need is physiological and safety. This is followed by love and belonging, then social needs or esteem. Self-actualization is the highest level that everyone strives to achieve. Dealing with angry or upset patients needs patience. The technologist should try to meet the personal needs of the patient before addressing the practical need. The exact expression that encompasses this interaction is to take the heat. Taking the heat means allowing angry or upset patients to vent their anger or frustration uninterrupted and early in the interaction. By taking the heat immediately, the patient may calm down sufficiently to advance the interaction. The technologist can apologize without taking the blame or admitting fault. For example, by saying, I apologize that you were inconvenienced. The technologist can also emphasize with the patient by saying, I'm sure the problem was upsetting or frustrating. However, when dealing with angry or upset patients, the technologist should always err on the side of caution and practice self-protection by always being aware of their surroundings. The technologist should never turn his or her back to an aggressive patient, and they should keep an eye on the patient at all times while never letting the patient get between them and the exit. When speaking, using a low, soothing voice and never reveal any personal information. Some patients are reluctant to express their dissatisfaction directly to the technologist, but they will not hesitate to tell others. It is important to confirm satisfaction to help identify dissatisfied patients. Patients who are hesitant 
or non-committal can actually be dissatisfied. The technologist should probe the patient further in order to identify any possible reason for the hesitancy. Visually impaired patients could be blind or may be present with an optical injury. Give clear step-by-step -step instructions before, during, and after the examination and use a running commentary to keep the patient well informed. All communication with the visually impaired should be verbal because nonverbal cues such as body language or facial expression may not be recognized. Paralanguage is important to provide the patient with context and emotion and gentle touch can often be reassuring. Speech and or hearing impaired patients do not need to be addressed using loud speech. Nonverbal communication such as facial expression is important. It is also important not to use simplistic terminology or assume the patient does not understand. Using pantomime and or demonstrations to communicate instructions. Communication should also be in writing or by the use of sign language by experts if sign language is not known by the technologist. When dealing with non-English speaking patients, touch, facial expressions, and pantomime can be useful. Most patients will understand yes and no and stop. Patients will appreciate any attempt to communicate using their language. Do not use a relative, especially a child, when communicating sensitive or serious medical information. Most medical facilities have trained bilingual employees who are available to help patients and visitors or legal language interpretation services. When dealing with mentally impaired patients, the technologist should keep in mind the degree of mental impairment will vary. Always address the patient first, but check with any caregiver for the appropriate method of communication. Some patients may not be totally aware of what they are doing and may need to be restrained from leaving the room or playing with equipment. Use a strong but reassuring tone of voice while keeping a continuous flow of conversation. Preparing the patient for the examination can help to keep them calm and aware that the technologist is trying to help. Despite the patient's level of disability, always allow autonomy if possible. Give clear and precise instructions. Address all conversation to the patient first and caregiver after, only if the patient cannot respond. If dealing with a child, offer reassurance to the adult caregiver. Friends and family may not be able to stay in the x-ray room during the x-ray procedure. However, the technologist should keep any friends or family informed. Avoid detailed descriptions of the procedure unless asked. Keep answers as brief as possible 
and try to overestimate instead of underestimating any wait time. This will avoid the possible of a having to go back with an apology to the family member or friend for any delays in the wait time. Mature patients consist of patients of the age of 65 years and older. Treat patients with respect at all times. Do not refer to the patient as old or geriatric. Avoid stereotypes and treat the patient as an adult. Avoid simplistic or childish terms. Remember that these patients may need additional support, especially when moving or transferring from a chair to the x-ray table or even getting on the table from a standing position. Elderly patients may need extra time to perform routine acts. The technologist should make sure all instructions are clear and understood. Background noise can be a problem because of hearing loss. Patients can have visual problems. These patients may have difficulty walking and are more prone to falls. Also remember that the skin is more fragile than a younger person and is easily traumatized or bruised. Therefore, the technologist should avoid putting tapes or adhesives directly on the skin when possible. During imaging, use a pad on the x-ray tables to support and cushion the back, the heels, and the head to avoid a painful study. Warm blankets can reduce shivering due to cold and will empathize and demonstrate empathy. The patient may have difficulty drinking while lying supine for studies such as the upper gastrointestinal study or UGI. A patient may have a barium enema or BE and may have difficulty holding the barium due to loss of sphincter control. The technologist may need to provide a bedpan and a urinal during long examinations because the patients may be unable to hold urine for an extended period. Geriatrics or gerontology deals with patients over the age of 65. A patient in the age range of 65 to 74 can be young old based on age, but healthy and active based on ability. Between 75 and 84, the patient can be old old based on age, but transitional based on ability. The patient aged 85 and older can be oldest old based on age and frail and infirm based on ability. Note that the patient can also be frail and infirm in any age category. Therefore, ability and not age will more accurately define the patient's condition. In pediatric imaging, remember that the key to imaging is to first recognize that although the imaging is similar, the approach will be different. Children are not many adults. In dealing with children, the technologist will sometimes need to apply immobilization devices and should be aware of their use. But the technologist should also remember 
that each child will need a different approach depending on the child's age and or state of development. And most importantly, technologists should be aware of the need for radiation protection when dealing with children. The understanding or cooperation level of the pediatric patient depends on the age of the child. However, children will not all develop at the same rate. So there is no clear cut division between age groups. In addition, a child may regress emotionally when ill or when undergoing stressful tests held in unfamiliar surroundings. Cooperation from the child may depend on the presence or absence of a parent, their previous experiences, as well as the severity of the child's illness. The technologist should try to create a pleasant atmosphere and work with the child based on the child's understanding or age level. A play area with toys, games, activities, books or magazines can provide a useful distraction. The technologist should try to be as honest and creative as possible when dealing with children. There are a number of general considerations all technologists should consider with pediatric patients. It is best to have the room prepared before bringing the child in. The child may need the support of the parent or guardian to ensure a successful examination. If the parent is allowed in the room, the parent will need a clearly defined role. In a few cases, having the parent in the room may actually be contraindicated. The technologist will need to accurately determine if the parent is helping or impeding the imaging process. Communication is essential and should be at the child's level. The technologist should perform introductions and offer suggestions in order to invite cooperation from the child. If possible, request the child's help, and most conversations will provide a good distraction. Answer questions in a truthful as possible manner and give sincere praise only if it is deserved. Infants is a category that covers children in the birth to one year bracket. These children should never be left alone, even if properly immobilized. Many infants will respond favorable to stuffed toys or soft toys. Having the parent or guardian hold a toy in front of the child may just keep the child still long enough to make the exposure. Some infants have a security object, such as a blanket. Never separate a child from their security object, whether it is a blanket or a toy, unless absolutely necessary for image quality. And even then, try to keep the object in the child's sight. Small infants may respond to being held close with a tight blanket. Sometimes a soothing voice and gentle stroking is the only thing the child needs. Technologists should remember that small infants 
will cry if hungry, cold, or exhausted, and older infants are capable of recognizing a familiar face and may experience separation anxiety if faced with a unfamiliar face. This is another reason to allow the parent to assist with the entire procedure if possible. Toddlers belong to the one to three year old bracket. A toddler's concept of time is limited to the now. The distance is whatever can be seen in the immediate. This means that it is not possible to bribe the toddler. It is important to use simple words and not expect the toddler to think about how they will feel in one hour. These children are concerned only about the here and now. Toddlers are unfortunately capable of retaining a vivid memory of past discomforts associated with people dressed in white. It may be helpful to remove a white lab coat to calm the child. This age group generally do not understand more than one word for something. It is important to ask the parent what terms the child uses or is familiar with. Toddlers will need a great deal of reassurance. Speak calmly, quietly, and firmly, and move as fast as possible to get the toddler out of the room quickly. Preschoolers belong to the three to five years age bracket. Preschoolers may never hold still for long, but can be remarkably cooperative if their trust has been won. Unfortunately, preschoolers will take things very literally. Be very careful with an explanation that you may give and keep them short and simple. Sentences such as having a shot may have serious connotations. These children like to have control over their surroundings and like demonstrating a measure of independence. Ask for their help and give them a job to do. Let them touch the equipment and give them time to explore and ask questions. The few minutes it takes to win a child's confidence may make a big difference in the quality of the final image. Bribery is permitted and possible and can be very effective in this age group. Bribery should be in the form of stickers or band-aids or other non-food items to avoid conflict with the parent or guardian. However, regardless of the bribe, always make sure the parent or guardian approves the form of bribery. Be honest with preschoolers, but always emphasize the positive. If you are not honest, you will lose their trust and they may never believe you again. Often, Young people will respond well to making a game of having their picture taken or seeing how long they can hold their still. Never use threats or unnecessary force, especially in the form of immobilization devices. These should be a last resort. If they really are uncooperative and are agitated, it will be next to impossible to restrain children in this age group. School age children belong to the six to 10 years bracket. At this age, 
children can think logically and are capable of analyzing situations, but they may have special fears of bodily injury, of disease, separation from loved ones, death, and punishment. Remember, some tests may be perceived as punishment by a child. Explain all procedures in simple terms. Explain the reason for the test and how it will help the child. School age children are very curious and many would want to look at what you are doing at all times. It is often helpful to have strategically placed pictures or toys to help the child stay in position. The most important thing to take into consideration when dealing with this age group is to assess the individual needs of the child. Some children may regress just because of fear or illness. Adolescents belong to the bracket of children that are over 10 years. Patients in this category often require special consideration in order to preserve modesty and to avoid embarrassment when changing clothes during examinations. All effort should be made to preserve the adolescent's privacy. It is often helpful to focus the conversation on friends of the same sex to ease tensions during procedures. Some adolescent children will become chatty when nervous, while others may be silent. Each child has to be individually assessed. Adolescents are unfortunately well known for their swinging emotions. They may be unfriendly to the point of insolence or may regress to a more childish behavior. Again, the technologist may need to modify his or her approach according to the specific needs and attitudes of the child. Teenagers can sometimes worry about radiation and its effects on their sexuality or childbearing. Be an informed technologist. Only then will you be able to relay correct and up-to-date information to your patient. Pregnancy in this age group may be an issue. And sensitive questions such as, are you sexually active or are you pregnant, should be asked away from the parent to gain a truthful answer. Do not presume that your patient, although a teenager, does not have any say in their treatment. Some older teenagers are emancipated minors, living away from home, or unmarried, or married, or caring for a child. Many have control over their own health care. Teenagers of any age should be allowed to participate in decisions being made about their treatment. Let them know what you are doing and why. A minor can give consent for certain radiologic tests if, number one, they are undergoing treatment for STD, substance abuse, or mental illness in some states, Two, they are requesting birth control, but only in some states. Three, if the minor is emancipated, the emancipated minor may legally live separate from parents or guardians. Four, if the minor is considered a mature minor over the age of 14 or 15 years. However, this is recognized in only some states. If the minor is married 
And finally, if the minor is in active military service. Another factor to consider during imaging is that the patient may have a less effective lung function and is therefore unable to hold a good breath for a chest x-ray. Technologists should provide emotional support. The patient may have painful joints or arthritis or could experience dizziness when standing. Never leave the patient unattended and always assist the patient when moving on or off the x-ray table. We will now cover disease of the elderly, types of elder abuse, interacting with the terminal patients, and advance directives. Primary aging is a gradual process which begins in childhood and extends through old age. Secondary aging consists of disease, abuse, and, and disuse, which are often within the control of the individual. Illness is often associated with geriatric patients. Illness can be chronic, lasting over six months, or acute, which would be under six months. Some illness are more common among the elderly. These can include incontinence, heart disease, cancer, strokes, hypertension, arthritis, diabetes mellitus, pulmonary disease, visual and hearing impairments, and finally, problems associated with multiple medications. Aging is a gradual process and the patient will show physical changes as a function of the aging process. These can include slowing psychomotor responses, slowing of information processing, decreased visual acuity, and a decrease in senses. Each system or organ may show specific deterioration with age. In the respiratory system, there is a decreased cough reflex, shallow breathing, and a decreased pulmonary capacity and possible kyphosis. In the musculoskeletal system, there is an increased risk of osteoporosis, arthritis, decreased muscle strength, atrophied of muscle mass, and a constant fear of falls that can lead to fractures. For the cardiovascular system, there is a decreased cardiac efficiency, a risk of orthostatic hypotension, arterial sclerosis, deep vein thrombosis or DVTs, and a general feeling of tiredness. In the integumentary system, 
there is a loss of skin elasticity, a change of skin texture, a loss of touch sensation, a diminished sensation of heat or cold, and a loss of the subcutaneous fatty layer. In the gastrointestinal system, there is a loss of appetite, decreased secretions, decreased GI motility, and decreased sphincter muscle control. Elder abuse can be physical abuse and entails the use of unnecessary physical force to restrain a person. Emotional or psychological abuse entails inflicting anguish or pain or distress through verbal or nonverbal acts. Neglect or self-neglect is the refusal or failure to fulfill obligatory duties of caring for the person. Sexual abuse entails non-consensual sexual contact. If the technologist identifies elder abuse, this should be included in the clinical documentation or reported to a supervisor. Report only facts. Do not report suspicions or personal opinions. Provide emotional support to the patient during the course of the examination and always assess each patient to determine special needs. Society's attitudes toward death and dying have changed to become more open and respectful of the terminal patient's wishes and rights. Dying patients and their families and their loved ones need to work through the grieving process in a natural and individualized time frame. Patient autonomy should be recognized and valued. Care of these patients is usually the nurse's responsibility, but the technologist should be aware of problems that may occur during a radiologic examination. Technologists should know how to call a code and equally important, when to call a code. In dealing with the terminally ill, there are four possible states or conditions. Closed awareness where the patient is not told about the seriousness of their condition, suspicious awareness where the patient suspects they are terminally ill but are unsure, the patient is afraid to ask and is always looking for signs to confirm their suspicions. Mutual pretense occurs when both patient and staff know of the terminal illness but pretend otherwise. Either or both are unwilling to deal with the interpersonal conflicts. And open awareness, which is the preferred stage. Here, both patient and staff know and accept the patient's condition and everyone is able to work through the various stages of dying. The five stages of dying, as delineated by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, state that all terminally ill persons will move through these five stages. The advance could be in minutes, days, or months. Technologists will have to learn to respect the patient's stage or grieving or dying and learn how to handle personal feelings appropriately 
in order to interact effectively with the patient's relatives and friends. The stages of grieving or dying are denial and isolation. This is the initial reaction and should be supported by silence and acceptance of the person without discussing death. Anger occurs because the person feels they have not completed all they have set out to accomplish. This may be expressed in terms of anger towards the healthcare personnel, relatives, or friends. The bargaining stage focuses on hope and may be based on religion as a way to support the person's belief as this may relieve stress. Depression is a normal reaction and should be encouraged by caregivers. In this stage, the caregiver can give realistic praise while letting the patient express their feelings. Preparatory depression occurs when the patient realizes the inevitability of death. This stage also comes with a desire for death as a release from suffering. Touch for emotional support and silence is appropriate at this time. False attempts to cheer the patient up are not appropriate. Acceptance is the final stage and can occur only if the patient is helped through the other stages appropriately. The stage is sometimes characterized by a near total lack of feelings. Advanced directives provide individuals with means to direct their health care should they find themselves incapacitated or unable due to trauma or illness. The ideal approach is to clarify your wishes with directives and with a conversation with your loved ones. In modern society, patients are allowed autonomy and doctors or relatives cannot dictate the patient's care. The patient and physician can make decisions together. However, the patient's wishes should be taken into account. The advanced directive can sometimes be divided into two parts. Part one includes the name of the healthcare agent, proxy, surrogate, or representative, the roles and authorities your agent will assume must be clearly defined, including when the authority becomes effective and your agent's obligations. Your agent cannot be a personal doctor, but can be a family member. This person must be someone you can trust to make decisions based on your expressed wishes. Part two includes your living will, which will include end of life decisions, for example, a DNR or do not resuscitate, a DNI or do not intubate. The living will will also have information on what limits you would like placed on prolonging life and what method or type of pain relief you would like administered. Any other medical wish can be included in the living will. The medical power of attorney or POA document is different from the power of attorney that is authorized someone to make financial transactions for you. Without a medical power of attorney, 
the decisions about your care defaults to your spouse. If you aren't legally married, decisions fall to your adult caregivers or your adult children or your parents. If you are legally married, decisions fall to your adult children or your parents. The power of attorney is also called a durable power of attorney for health care or a health care agent or proxy. The medical power of attorney form is a legal document that designates an individual to make medical decisions on your behalf in the event that you are unable to do so. These forms allow your health care agent or proxy to use a living will as a guide, but interpret your wishes when unexpected developments aren't specifically addressed by your living will. The living will is a written legal document that spells out the types of medical treatments and life-sustaining measures you do or don't want, such as mechanical breathing with respiration and ventilation, tube feeding, resuscitation, or types of pain medication. In some states, the living will may be known by a different name, such as a health care declaration or a health care directive. Do not resuscitate order or DNR is a request to not have cardiopulmonary resuscitation or CPR if your heart stops or if you stop breathing. A DNR order can be put in your medical chart by your doctor. This concludes patient history taking and interactions. Prior to taking the examination, please reread the module objectives to verify that you have no additional questions to review. We hope you will continue on to the remaining modules in patient care in radiology. Thanks for watching. To purchase the full course and earn your CE credits, click on the link in the description or head on over to our website at www.medical-professionals.com. And while you're there, check out our All Access Pass, where you can get unlimited CE credits for your state and ARRT renewal for just $49.99. We also offer a host of free resources to make it easier than ever for radiologic technologists like you to achieve excellence. Check out our free radiology CE webinars, clinical reference guides, and free CE courses on our website today. Be more than just certified. Choose medical professionals.